Well, it is great to be home. Yeah. You know, it is an honor to be the head football coach at a university that I care so deeply about. It is an honor to be here standing in front of you. This past 24 hours is really, it, it has reaffirmed to me why I got into this profession. The outpour of text and calls from former teammates and players and people of this Beaver Nation and community of Corvallis and the state of Oregon, it reminded me of all these relationships that have been built now 20 years ago in this town. And I remember when I was in this town, it, it would began to say you know, I wanted to be a football coach because some of the experiences I was having as a player, I wanted to continue that as a football coach. Some of the relationships that I built through playing football at a university like this is really why I wanted to do that. And so the outpouring of texts and, uh, and calls and re reconnecting with some of them, I couldn't get back to all of them. It just reaffirmed to me why I wanted to do this. And now I'm sitting here in front of you guys at my dream job, in my dream town, at my dream school. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I got to do some thank yous, especially starting with these guys next to me, President Ray, Scott Barnes, Dan, Glenn Sugiyama. Uh, you guys have been phenomenal through this process. I thought the whole thing was first class. These guys came and did meet with me early in this process and then allowed me to finish my job at where I was, and I appreciated that. I could stay focused on that. They kept me abreast of where it was at, but it wasn't overwhelming in any way, a distraction. These guys were first class, top notch, and I can't, uh, I can't thank you enough for that. I do want to thank my family sitting down here. Candace, my wife, been married for 15 years. We talked about this day coming. And our first two years of that marriage was sitting right here in Corvallis as a graduate assistant, so she's coming home as well. My son, Robert, Bella, Charles, climbing all over the place. Appreciate you guys. My mom has been able to make it here today. And how about that? Today's her birthday, hey. November 3rd. Day. When I, when I first did this list and started wanting to think about all the people I had to thank, it was just going to be impossible. All the people in this town and have been impactful on me throughout my lifetime. But uh, I'd be remiss about mentioning a few of these, and so I want, to, I want to thank some other people. It's going to start with Chris Peterson. Six years together, gave me an opportunity at Boise State, brought me over to the University of Washington, really teached, teached me how to build a championship team, and it started with building a championship culture. The guy is elite teacher, elite football coach. I will always be indebted to that man. My growth as a coach and as a teacher and as a friend and as a human being is all so much better from my time spent with him. He means the world to me. Nick Holt gave me my first opportunity as a full-time job at the University of Idaho. And uh, I'll, be, I'll always be indebted to him for that. Robin Flugrad gave me my first opportunity to be an offensive coordinator at the University of Montana. Took a shot at a guy, and those jobs are not easy to get to be hired as a coordinator when you had not done it. He, uh, he believed in me, gave me an opportunity. I'll always be grateful for him. Mark Vaught was a good friend of mine, went to this school, always been a mentor and an encourager. And uh, his advice through tough times meant, meant so much to me. Mitch Barnhart. Athletic director back in the day when I was here and has continued that relationship throughout. Great advisor, someone I lent on and continue to lean on. I appreciate him. And then, of course, my last two of uh, my coaches, right? My coaches. I'm going to start with Mike Riley because he, he, he's the one who gave me this opportunity. Vividly remember it with Mike Riley. Came up here on a recruiting visit and he said, hey, I'm going to give you an opportunity to walk on but you'll be treated just like a scholarship player. You'll get opportunities just like a scholarship player in regards to competing. He kept his word, and uh, history, history played out. Uh, he, he really laid the foundation for my understanding of football knowledge, schematics, and uh, how you evaluate talent and use talent. I'll always be indebted to him. Such a good man, a dear friend to this day. And then Dennis Erickson, right? Dennis Erickson, some of the best years of my life here as well of, of winning games. Dennis Erickson really taught me what it's about to be a true competitor. And you're not going to back down to anyone or any program in any way. You're going to go out and compete. And there's, I can vividly remember, and I told the guys just a minute ago, he walks into a room, 
right? We had just, Mike Riley goes to the Chargers. He walks into that first team meeting room. He starts flashing around a national championship ring and says, why not here? Why not? We can get this done right here. And that was an echoed message to these guys that I met with at 10 o'clock. So those guys have been crucial to my development. Mike Riley and Dennis and Erickson have been uh, phenomenal, dear friends. And I learned so much from those guys and I continue will to do so. OSU fits me and I fit OSU. In regards to the town, the place to where raise some kids, the place to go to school, and again, beyond just being a student athlete, be involved in a community. The state of Oregon fits me. I've been in the Northwest for now 15 some odd years. This is a great place. I always travel back here and I'm so excited to start again to raise a family at this place and turn a football program into something special. OSU is a spot that's dear to my heart and I don't, I don't hold it lightly to stand in front of you and more or less the front porch of the university in one of the biggest jobs in the state of Oregon, especially at this place. It is an honor to sit here and be able to represent this university in a way of integrity with accountability and, uh, and competitiveness because that's what we're going to do. We're going to go out and compete. We're going to do it the right way. We can establish a, a culture where these kids, school is important to them. School is going to be a part of their lives throughout but also we're gonna go out and compete and win some football games because that's really why I'm here. And so again, this place fits me. I know how to sell this place in regards to recruiting. Very confident when I go in and sit in a room with a mom or a prospective student athlete, I can genuinely tell them what it is like and how it, does, how it looks to get it done because I've done it and it can get done again. And I've lived it and I've walked those dorm room halls and I've gone to class on campus and I've worked out in this uh, building it's been done and it can be done again. I think there's sometimes the slogans sound really cool and recruiting pitches can be really artful and we'll have some of those. But when you look in my eye and see how it means to me, I believe I can sell this place. And at the end of the day, it can continue to sell itself the more people continue to look into it. And so I feel very confident on the recruiting end. The other piece on the recruiting end for it, I'm from Southern California. Uh, that's going to be a heavy base of recruiting. I've been in this conference for the last four years. I know what it looks like to transition, change a culture, and win a championship as a coach, and obviously as a player. Very confident I've got what it takes, a vision for what it needs to look like. I've lived it. I've coached it, and now we need to go get it done. Now we need to go get it done. So honored to be here, so excited. And again, this place fits me. This is home to me, and let's go Beavs.